Hi everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. Okay, let's jump into it. So today we are going to have a look at the average amount of product purchase tr t per transaction. So we're going to work, uh, we're actually gonna work that out first and then I'm, th then I'm also going to show you how you could derive even more. So you can actually uh, find even uh, more interesting insights based off this initial one. So we're gonna branch out into other things and I'm gonna show you how we can do that um, pretty efficiently post, uh, post this one. Okay, so we're gonna work out how we can work out, say, a, a, a value per transaction, right? And so it's not actually too, it's not too difficult. It's not too difficult at all. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna to jump to the sales table and I'm gonna show you what, what, um, what, what we're working with here and, and yours might be slightly different but you could use a similar technique. Now, we have an order ID column here, right? So every order ID equates to every transaction in this, in this particular table. So we need to find a way to evaluate um, every single one of these transactions and essentially average up the sales that we have made for every single transaction. And then that's gonna give us, depending on whatever context we put it into, that's gonna say, okay, well, this is the average per um, transaction that uh, we, we obtain. And that could be, it could be from a regional perspective, could be from a customer perspective, a salesperson perspective, et cetera. So there's lots of great stuff. Now some um, some data tables actually have, uh, like a, you might have a, uh, a transaction ID, but then within that transaction, or sorry, an order ID, and then within that order you might have a number of different transactions. And so depending on what calculation you wanna do, you'll probably want to input that column, um, or, or whatever average you wanna do, you wanna input, or import that input that column into the into the calculations. Okay, so how do we do it? So let's um, let's come up here and create a, another measure. And I'm gonna call this one, I'm gonna call this one average sales per transaction. And I'm gonna use average X here, because this is what, uh, this allows us to do these averages um, by iterating through something. And uh, I'm going to, within average X, I'm gonna go values I'm going to put my order ID, and so this is where you can you would make a choice. You'd say, okay, I want the average of my orders or my transactions or, or, or something like that. And then I've already got the measure that I want to um, average up here, so I'm just going to input that. I'm going to go average um, up the total sales for every single order. And so then I go, okay, and then if I put this into the customer uh, customer name context, well then you'll see that this is actually now showing us on average how much each person um, per, makes per transaction. Every time they come into a store, this is this is on average how much they purchase of us. And so pretty good insight, right? And then we could um, obviously make this just look a little bit better. So I really like data bars, so I would um, put those in here. And most of them, they're all gonna be positive, right? So I'm just gonna just do the one. But we don't have to stop there, and that's what's cool, is that we can we can go even further, right? We've got some other uh, core, core calculations, well, that's what I call them. So I got total profits, and I've got, say, total costs. Well, what if I want to? What if I want to go average profits per transaction? And so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste this uh, into another measure. And I'm gonna go profits here. And then instead of total sales, well, I'm gonna put total profits. And so now we're gonna work out uh, for every single transaction what our profits are, and then we're gonna average those up. And so I can use that, drag that into my table, and then you'll see here that, um, interestingly enough, you know, for instance, this person here, Chris Fuller, he actually made, um, we got greater profitability per transaction than someone who actually made greater sales than them. So pretty good insights, right? And, uh, and then I'm just gonna obviously go data bars here too. And I think this um, will, will slowly start to uh, look pretty compelling the insight that we get you see interesting interesting isn't it you can see how that actually differs per transaction based on that and so once we get here i thought okay well why don't we go average margin let's go average margin per transaction and we don't need to um, reference anything in the table now we can actually just use measures within measures and i'm going to go average margins per transaction and then all i'm going to do is use divide and i can use the ones that we've got so i'm going to go average profits per transaction, and then average sales per transaction, and then put zero for the alternative result. And then all I've got to do is make sure that it's formatted correctly. And then I'm gonna drag this into the table. And you'll see now, that's why, this is why we have um, got higher profits for Chris Fuller than we do for Philip Foster, is because obviously his, his margins are high. So very, very um, uh, interesting insight for that particular customer. 
and or for, for all of our customer set. And what's cool, right, is we could use these on any context. I mean, this is just um, we're just using we're just using a filter from um, our customers table. If you think about it, or we could use filters from any of these tables and and see how things change. I mean, what's also really interesting to note is that we could have a look at this average margins per transaction over time. So. I'll just quickly whip this up so I could use, utilize this one and we could then draw that out and it would be, I think it's probably a little bit too busy to be honest, but um, but you can, I guess you can see an average, you can see how it changes. Um, if you, I guess if this is just demo data, if this was real data, it would probably make a bit more sense, but it's just very, um, very busy in this case. So what, I guess what we could do is we could actually go month and year, maybe this is a bit more relevant and we can see how it changes through time like so. So in this way, we're going to see seasonality and, and, all, and all of that good stuff. And I guess the other thing we could do is we could, um, well, first of all, we could actually put some, um, say, background colors just to get a better snapshot of what's actually going on. And so we can see our high margin versus our lower margin um, a lot easier there. And it's interesting that we're getting some pretty high um, profit people down, uh, profits, uh, people with, with profits down here per transaction versus you know where they actually sit with their um, uh, with their sales. Well, for instance, um, this one, you know, 40% margin, you know, it really sticks out clear as day. And, and we could also say filter. This is what's just what's so amazing about Power BI is just how quick you can find this stuff. And then so we can see here that these are obviously our most profitable per um, transaction. Um, who knows what's happening there? Could be just the salesperson's very good. Um, so I guess the other thing we could do, just to just to um, look further into the insight, is work out well is it regional based? You know, is it regional based? Is there something happening regionally? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from this map visual to a more filled map. And it works because um, my data is uh, my my states uh, it picks up states pretty well. And so what we can do here is we can really drill in and we can say have a look and see. Okay, well New Hampshire, well low margins for New Hampshire, and it looks like it looks like everyone else is pretty evenly distributed. So it's not regionally based, interestingly enough. But then we could also you know you could also select uh, multi select through these tables. These tables are just amazing in Power BI, and you can see you know out of the subset of customers where the where the breakdown was. You can see. You know, through time, you can also see um, spatially. So, some really good, um, good ways to discover some some interesting insights around that. Okay, so let's round this off. Um, hopefully, you can see. You know, we we worked with one thing and then we branched out into lots of things, and and that's what you can do with with many calculations, many um, techniques with DAX formula. Um, you know, you can do exactly the same and, and very quickly find some some really good insight. So just a reminder, if you want to download this, you can um, just check out Enterprise DNA TV resources. A uh, link is down in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. I'm putting out a lot of content on Power BI, um, really trying to make a big impact out there. So um, certainly um, certainly keep a watch out for, for, more, for more videos. Um, and yeah, if you like the content, throw us a like. Really, really appreciate that. Um, and hope you benefited a lot from um, uh, not only this one, uh, this video, but many others. Okay, all the best. Good luck with uh, working away at the, these techniques in your own models. Cheers.